So, it's finally here. I literally cannot move from this spot, which is annoying because I've still got a couple more things to actually get from over here. So that's going to, you know, I can't even be bothered to edit it out. This is everything I got or purchased. Yeah, you know, full disclosure, when, I, when I've bought stuff, I will tell you. Um, and some of my experiences and not so experiences I'm looking at you HTC Vive and Steam you idiot from EGX this is the EGX hall and I literally mean hall because as I say the floor is absolutely covered around me there's stuff over there which is out of camera thank god none of this is so um, starting off just because I think this is one of the most stupid things that I was given personally. Um, trying to fold it in place because uh, it got a bit mashed about in transit. As did quite a lot of the things. It's this. It's a Stay Fresh uh, Splatoon hat. Now, some of you might be wondering, that seems pretty cool. What's the problem? The problem is that one that i'm wearing it that is a problem but two that's as far as it will go on my head without the thing breaking so yeah clearly designed for children but it it's it's got a visor which would be nice if it was outside but depend you know if you go via train you don't even have to walk outside to even um get on the train Unless you want to walk so far up the platform, but it goes from the undercover bit to the outdoor bit. But not many people do. So yeah, weird, but you know, it proves that I did go to the Nintendo booth. Which was partially a mistake. Because to be when half of the games that you have there are things that came out last year, you know there's an issue. I don't even know where to put that. Put it over here. Whatever. Uh, the next big thing that happened, arguably, every day, was this. This, I guess, is the official... There's been drink sponsors over the years, but this year, it's Tornado. Um, this is Storm, which, from what I remember, tasted okay. Annoying, the stupid thing is, I think this is the one that, ah, this is the one from three weeks ago. Doesn't smell like it's gone off. I did drink it three weeks ago. Smells alright. What flavour is supposed to be that? What's it say? Does it even say? But basically, these are the guys that are sponsoring um, Just Cause Free. When it comes out in December. And there was a... They literally had like three or four stalls. Where they were just... Bunk, can, bunk, can. They had about 75 fridges. <laughs> it was like... Just get the 24 pack out. Bunk, bunk. Uh, the only two that I've tried is this. Which is okay. And the one that I really liked... Uh, was ice. Um, it's actually not too bad a drink. They were giving away vouchers as well for uh, money off that's probably in one of these bags all I do know is I think I've got about 200 of them I didn't check that make sure that's properly sealed because look I, that's the, I don't know why I'm doing this I've opened it that is the one thing that I will say that I think is genius about this not that you might not like the drink, but it's the cap. It's the cap. It's a resealable cap, so literally you can turn it upside down like I just did, and um, and do something with it. Oh. <laughs> Don't know why I said it like that. Um, so yeah, that actually wasn't too bad a drink. Normally those sort of things, it's like. Oof. I think a couple of years ago it was actually Mountain Dew, but whatever. Uh, another thing from Nintendo Brew, basically I'm trying to go on the actual backpack, which is, I've just, un well, unpacked, and I'm repacking now with stuff. 
Um, now, Owen did his unboxings. I'm going to do some unpackings because uh, when I went to check out, I wanted to check out personally the Chibi Robo game on the 3DS, and it does seem pretty nice. Uh, I know the reviews have not been very good, but obviously when you're at a demo session, you're not going to be able to get really a substantial review real, really done. Um, but while I was waiting, I passed these over. Two packs of Ancient Origins X and Y uh, Pokemon trading cards. And I guess I won't be packing these into the bags, because I'm going to see what I've got in here as I just nearly tore the things entirely apart this is brilliant this is this is as is so if this video is an hour long you know it's going to be um, hopefully they aren't the same three cards otherwise I'm gonna be very angry by looks of it they're not because that's not that right so in the first pack we have, um, oh, that's the card list. Do I really want the card list? Oh, I see. There's rares and ultra rares or whatever. What's it say? Free additional, because it doesn't even say what it is. So I've got Oddish. I recognize him. Oddish. Yay. From the first gen. Oh, I've got Magikarp. Magikarp. Epic Splash. Wow. I thought one of its moves was just flop about, and that was the only move it really had, or am I getting it confused with another thing? No, I think that was Magikarp. It's only when it evolved it was something good. And we've got... Apparently Route. That must be from a newer generation, because I have no clue what the hell that is. And yes, that is a technical term. Uh, and the other one, it was different because there's a black one in here. Black card, whatever that is. Um, see, all these are new. All these are different generation, apart from the original 151s. I have no clue. So we've got ink. I'm guessing that does something to do with ink. It's not going to be great quality because I can't, you know, because I've got so much to get through. I'm just going to be snazzing it up. Combi, what the? Somebody just took a honeycomb and made it into a Pokemon. Number 415. You can see how they were getting desperate at some point. And then... Relicanth. Again, these these are in the generations beyond the 251 that I am uh, most vivid of remembering. I'll actually put them all in one pack. They should all fit. It will be a bit of a squeeze, but there we go. Um, so, you know, I've got a couple of cards there I know about. The other ones I don't, but, you know, I'm going to take advantage of it. Then there was this. Yes, this. Oh, why don't we get a lollipop stick and just stick a moustache on it? And everyone will think that they're Mario. I wanted the ice lolly. Um, we had a lethal ear for Total War Battle Kingdoms. Has a code on it. See, it's got a code. I'm not showing you what it is. Download on the app store. Oh, it's on Steam. Oh, good. So I can actually play it. Coming soon to Android. Well, you never know. That's something useful. <laughs> I say useful. Um, now with the, oh, oh yeah, this was the Star Wars Battlefront card, because I did get to play that. Um, annoyingly, <laughs> the cute, the, and this is the first thing I need to bring up of criticism of the event. Queues were worse than ever, despite the fact we're in a bigger venue, and the fact that bigger venue means more space. There were two to three hour queues at Earl's Court, like two years ago. Um, well, no, I guess last year was the very last one. Yeah, there were two to three hour queues for the big games. 
Star Wars Battlefront had a queue that was four hours long. And the thing is, it was... The, the stupid thing about it is, all the people that played it didn't know that two days later, when the beta came out, they were playing exactly the same thing. So they they basically queued up for nothing. Me, I haven't got a PC rig that's going to be able to run it. I haven't got a PS4 or an Xbox One. I'd like to play it because you people want to know what it's like. You know, in short, it's Battlefield meets Star Wars. That might be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your view of the Battlefield franchise. Season Pass thing is a different thing, but that's going to be another video for another time. But yeah, I played it. They also had like a, a demo, I think, on the Sony stand. And if you if you handed it in, you got the chance to win uh, Darth Vader PS4. But I couldn't be asked, which is a technical term, by the way. Um, then these. Yeah, the best thing about these is half of these I actually picked up off the floor. I couldn't be bothered to hand them in uh, to actually get anything fancy. But uh, it was a Halo Five Guardians thing. All they had there was like 12 on 12 multiplayer. That actually had a better queue. Surprisingly, that had a better queue than Halo 4 Master Chief Collection did last year. That might be because Halo 4 Master Chief Collection was absolutely atrocious on multiplayer and single player. Still is, to some extent. Uh, Forza 6. Feels like a Forza game. You know, it's, Graphically, it looked very good, but then so did 5. I didn't really notice any... Substantial differences. Um, ba -ba Got a couple of things for uh, Destiny here. That's a. Uh, oh. Get £5 off your Destiny t shirt. Well, if I'd known that, I might have got one. Then again, I didn't buy that one because I was more interested in the other one, which we'll get to. And then Taken King, and this, it doesn't say when it has to be redeemed by. So for that reason, I'm covering it up. It was a code for uh, the Blacksmith Shader, whatever that is. If it involves microtransactions, well, we're screwed, aren't we? Um trying to rearrange this bag on the fly is a bit of a problem. Ah. Alright, got some more stuff. A few indie games that I did play. Replay. Again, this has all been crushed in transit. Replay. Uh, VHS is not dead. Sort of a nice little retro sort of indie game. You know, it did seem pretty nice from what I played. Uh, from Nico and all that. Uh, also, uh, again, this crease. I think their Kickstarter is still going. Uh, Between Heartbeats, which is a very interesting sort of uh, space. Basically, you're a spaceship in the bloodstream, and trying to cure. You know, trying to get rid of the illnesses and stuff. It's a good concept, actually. I do like it. I don't, I don't think it's personally enough for me to back it. Although I think I have. Put it in my list, so I'll probably see it in the la when it's in its last 48 hours. Whether I'll do anything. Uh, this is the one card that I really wanted. Because um, it's the one that looks coolest. Oh, I did play Cuphead. Cuphead is hard. But then again, I was only probably playing bosses, so... They've still got to do stuff around it. Uh, the card that I wanted, because it's probably the best Xbox game of the year, which, depending how good Halo 5 is, could still be Xbox game of the year, Rare Replay. Basically, the idea is you got all these cards, and if you handed them in, you got the chance to get an Xbox One. But in previous years, they've just been like... I think last year they were sort of like business card-sized things, not huge things like this, which has got some really good artwork on throughout the years of Rare 
So uh, that is something I'm probably going to have to keep in a good fashion. Uh, I've got some artwork here for uh, Kawiratos. It was only a sort of a simple demo, nothing hugely uh, fancy about it. But um, I will say the art style is very nice. Um, be interested to see what comes from that in the future. But yeah, the art style was pretty nice. Uh, we've got Tears of Avia, not uh, which is it says funded with Kickstarter, but then it says it's back it on Kickstarter. So uh, it's basically a PC RPG, which t uh, to be honest has been lacking. There have not been too many of them over the years. Um, now I'm trying to look at all these. Uh, yeah. There's not been too many of them over the years, but uh, something to check out. Then also, uh, this was the this was the best publicity of the year. Um, it was the queue for. I'm trying to think. I think it was the. I think it was. I think it was in the queue for playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate at the Sony booth. Which ironically was exactly the same demo that I played at the Ubisoft booth. Didn't seem too bad a demo. But uh, one of the people from the Shadow Puppeteer stage was coming around with these uh, pretty cool badges. Saying, uh, check us out. Um, they were on the indie stuff, but they've also had a Wii U version as part of the Nintendo stand. Didn't look too bad. You know, um... Nice little fun thing, and of course, you know, freebies are always nice. Uh, also, some more stuff from Nico Entertainment. Oh, that's Nico. Okay, Nico had a lot of stuff here then. I don't think they had the the Puff one. I know I've I've bought that one. It's, oh, in case you're wondering, Puff has got a accent on it, so it's. I think it's pronounced Puff. I'm not sure. Might be Poof, but the one yeah, Kawitter off the same people. But the one that I did play. That is part of this stuff is one of my games of the show and that and this this was really nice to get just by playing it a bit uh, nice little badge for Californium basically um, it is very sci-fi very sci-fi inspired um, hang on have I got the where are they very sci-fi inspired, but also very, very crazy in design. Now, the, what it says here, the, a first-person exploration game uh, where you are a sci-fi writer trapped in shifting realities. Will you find what's behind the simul simulacra? This looked incredible. It's got sort of the cell shading and the craziness of like uh, 13. The sci-fi nature that a lot of people uh, are looking for. You know, not like a generic shooter. This is sort of a point and click style. You've got to go here, do certain things. Uh, there's, there's another shot. I think that's basically, that was sort of the shot of their main website, at least for the time being. Uh, they were a little French studio. Um, apparently, uh, the actual French, I know it's the French government, but it's got some such financial backing in France that there's actually a television documentary being produced over there for it. I, I did ask them whether there's any chance of it coming out over here, and they did say that they are, uh, they are in talks with Steam as to getting it up on their video platform, which hopefully means GOG as well, because not everything has to be DRM for it, we'll just have to have DRM, does it? Uh, next, and I'll only point out a couple of these, because they're all the same, um, Tearaway Unfolded had a craft mouse that you could get. I got about 15 or 20, just picked them up. The one thing, actually, because I forgot to get it because it's downstairs. 
but I'll probably show it off in a future video, but I'll mention it here. Um, they actually had giant, like, full-size stools that were foldable, like, cardboard things. It's sort of about this big. It's, you know, only because I haven't thought about it at the last minute, and because there's a lot of other things, um, you know, there's a lot of things down here, and because I forgot about it, it's not here. But, uh, yes, that was actually, it was a hell of a thing to get back on the train as well. I'll give you that. Um, it was. But I will say tear away unfolded, as I'm still in view just about. Um, that was pretty good. I did, uh, I did like it. And everything. Um, of course, the advantage of going on the very last day is because uh, quite a lot of this stuff is was obtained on the last day and it was more so towards the end like when I got these and the splatoon hats and everything uh, they start giving away a lot of stuff you know all the stuff that they produced that they've got too much of and they're just going to discard anyway so they'll just give it away on the floor so the next couple of these are our giveaways one of which is ironic which I'll get to later so this is the first t-shirt um, you probably can't make out there is sort of an image on it you might be able to just about see. it's not a great concept you know let's do a dark green t-shirt and let's put artwork on it that's black you can sort of see the club here though I don't know if I can get it in there if you can get if I can get it in the light you can sort of see a club at the top here um, What does it say on the back? I haven't even looked at this. Respect the law, it says. I don't know if it's going to be able to... You can sort of see it. It's not a great concept. Last year when they had white t-shirts for the last game, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, this is... Amazingly, it's extra large as well, so it might actually fit me. I'm not trying it on, though. Because it's cold. Um, this is a t-shirt that... The idea was, uh, one of the games there was Total War, Warhammer. And they had the demo there. And basically, if anybody could beat it on hard mode, uh, they would get this t-shirt as a prize. Or, of course, you could do what I did, just be lucky in the last few hours and just go, do you want a t-shirt? And I'm like, yep. So, that's the deal with that. That's what happened there. Uh, and then the other one is the ironic one, which means I don't have to pull it out again. But then again, I've also looked at this as well, and it's it's also a better size than what I had as well, which is ironic. It's the Call of Duty Black Ops free shirt. It sort of is that orange. I won't say anything else, really. You know, it does look pretty cool. It actually does look like it actually could fit me. Holy crap. It was weird. Also, the, the best thing was, those energy drinks that I showed you earlier, they weren't allowing them into the booth, because obviously they're sponsored by Monster Energy. So the amount of cans that were, like, at the front of the, the space where you had to stand inside the booth, because it was obviously 18 certificate, was like there was more cans than people at some points. It was brilliant. I mean, not for them, you know. Execution-wise, they pretty much screwed up. But either way. Uh, so then we had. Oh, I forgot I had this. Ah, that's where my piles of. That's where my piles of things are. That's important. That, these are important. My uh, stickers, stickers, my cards to get me money off uh, tornado energy drinks till the end of the, literally, they're until the end of the year. So I'm like, yeah, no wonder. Uh, and this, I don't know whether these are all them or whether there's some Morrison ones inside it. In which case, I might as well share them with you just to screw them over even more. So not only is there like Morrison's codes, which I think in the UK is pretty good, 
Um, you've also got uh, this. 50% off a 12-pack at Amazon.co.uk. Uh, you just need to put the code TORNADO1 in the thing. I'll put it close. There you go. There you go. You see, you've got a discount code for some energy drinks. Admittedly, you might not want to buy 12. You might want to buy one uh, for, a, for a pound or so from um, other shops. And then if you like it, get the 50% off. I'm going to have to check out the price of that now because that seems ridiculously cheap and good price. So I know what I'm doing after I'm on uploading this video to Owen. Right. So the other stuff in here is part of the Just Cause section again. I picked up quite a few of these, thank God I did, because they are, one is damaged, so I can show you it. Uh, some decals. We've got some some Tornado Energy decals, we've got Target Man, we've got a grenade, we've got some crazy-eyed thing over here, and then sort of the, the gun and the skulls. But then the really fancy thing, which is rather useful, considering... Well, it's, it'd be rather useful if I had a phone. That might give you a clue as to what was in here. So they've got uh, a thing which they launched this w uh, a few weeks back, called the Wingsuit Experience. And... Yeah. The Wingsuit Experience. What it is, is it gives you a 3D view of uh, somewhere in the world. There's like four or five different panoramas that you can choose from. But the idea is that you can see it and with like a phone or whatever you can go around. Except this is 3D. So you know what that means. I now own, technically, Google Cardboard. We've got a Google Cardboard thing here from Square Enix as part of the bag of Just Cause stuff. Some people didn't even get bags, they just had to carry this. But yeah, um, the idea is you piece it together, obviously. You can slot your phone inside it and basically get your makeshift 3D experience, which is a pretty sweet deal, I must say. So amazingly, I think... Oh no, there's one more thing. No, that won't go back in the bag. I'm going to keep that out and up here. Um... I can't even remember what's in here. We've got two things in here, by the looks of it. One thing, I think, is a purchase. No, it isn't. A few more freebies. What did I buy? What did I buy? Oh, that's the bag for that. What's that? Oh. It's in the wrong bag. That's over there. It's another thing we're going to have to get in a minute. So this, um, I think I got really fluky here. So they were doing a thing for Destiny. They were doing a thing for Destiny where if you, if your team of six won in uh, Rift, I think it was Rift that we were playing, uh, you got a t-shirt. Admittedly it's large, so it probably won't fit me. But I was absolutely, you know, I think I got about 3 and 26. I got killed quite a lot. Which admittedly, you know, the game's been out for a year. So there's going to be people that are good. Luckily, there were people good on my side as well. And the other side got pretty uh, pasted. It was only until about four minutes from the end, though, that I realised we were actually winning. Because I, I was looking at things and I was like, oh, we're losing. Oh, with that side? Genius. <laughs> so that was a surprise. And then these, they were giving out... As well as, um, basically, if you want to fight with them, you got given one. But they were also giving them out at some point on the stage, I think. Or throwing them out. And it's these. It is your very own Ryu um, bandana, or whatever it's called. I can't be bothered to do it because I'm sweating again. But I think I know what I'm doing for co cosplay. If I ever do anything, 
because I've got the uh, the Ryu headband to do it. Now it's pr it's not brilliantly put together because there's some stitching coming away a bit loose here, but you know it's actually pretty nice. Also, makeshift tourniquet if you know I break my arm. But I did actually want that, you know. When I saw it, I was like, yeah, that actually would be pretty nice. It's a nice thing to have. So, um, right, we're going to our first purchase. Purchase of the day. Yeah, because we've still got like two hours to go. Bear with me, kid. First purchase, because it's pretty cheap. Or at least I think it is compared to like the mainstream people. Uh, I got the collector's edition strategy guide for Batman Arkham Knight. Um, there were other ones as well. I think there was a Final Fantasy one and possibly Destiny. But, you know, I am a Batman fan. Um, I've got Arkham. I've got all the Arkham games bar Knight on Steam. Um, I didn't get Knight because I didn't have the chance to. Because I, wanted, I didn't want to buy it because all the reviews were saying it was crap. And then when people were starting to have it reduced, it wasn't even on Steam anyway. So, you know, at least hopefully if you, you haven't got it, uh, the game will be cheap by Christmas. Hopefully. Then again, with the, season, with the content still coming out with the season pass, it probably won't be. But the snazzy thing here is it comes with the lithograph. Some fan, I think they're... Somewhere in the back here, judging by it, it's bulging. Uh, exclusive early look at the Arkham Universe guide. So that'd be the entire series. That might be one worth getting. Uh, and also a mobile friendly e guide. Okay. So I guess I'll have to open it at some point and get the codes out. Oh, resale value goes through the. And then this is this is really surprising. Um, one of the big indie developers there, because they had their own booth, uh, was Prison Architects. And uh, at, during their developer session, and uh, for the rest of the day, I think that day, they were handing out these: uh, the the art book, the art of uh, Prison Architect. You know, also looking at their history, you got the one here that's been uh, cancelled. And then Prison Architect afterwards, but then you've got the other games, Uplink, uh, Darwinia, Defcon, and Multiwinia, you know, the four up here. And it really is a pretty nice book, just talking about, you know, the uh, the way it all came up. You know, those are the original mock-ups that they did, uh, the design for the guards and the staff. Um all different sort of concept art that was going for the stuff you know co community designs like you got the prison there which is like the uh, Starship Enterprise just really the fact that this is I don't even know if this is actually a thing you can buy there doesn't seem to be a barcode on it this is a really I, this, is, this is a really high quality thing for something that is basically an indie game and this is you know this is beautiful no, full play to introversion. I, um, you know, the game I think I've got on Steam but haven't played yet. Had it for a while. Should be playing because a lot of people seem to be talking about it. Um, they also had the booth there where you could get electrocuted, from what I remember. Don't know what that was about. Yeah, no, yeah, it was the ele they actually had sort of a makeshift electric chair. It's pretty nice. That wasn't a purchase, that was a freebie. But we go back to the purchases for, I guess it must be, I feel ashamed to tell you this, I actually bought something from Game. G game, if you're watching this, next time when you're coming to a games convention, actually have games buyable there rather than really expensive new things. You know, for every time you were down at Earl's Court, you had pre-owned games for, admittedly, the last-gen systems, the, PC, the PS3 and the 360. I still think you could have them, 
because there are still those people that are yet to step up to the next console. Also, you could have had at least pre-owned PS4 and Xbox One games, or even Wii U games, but I guess that's, you know, impossible, because, um, you know, the places like CEX have got tons of them instead. Not everybody has got the money to spend £55 on a special edition of FIFA. Or even £50. Especially because that week, if you went, ooh, 10 minutes down the train to the, the new station where they got a new sort of Tesco's, if you bought £30 worth of stuff, you could get the game for 30 quid instead of the standard 40 so yeah, game being outdone in price. No wonder nobody goes there. Which reminds me, I still need to book a chance to actually... I have to book a chance to go to an early, early Christmas opening thing. Which according to the Twitter for my local store, has no clue is happening. Either of them. Anyway, the thing that I did buy a game even though it was full price, but it's because I'm a fan. Uh, the history of, um, or the story behind FIFA, all the way from 94 on the, I think that copies the Sega Mega Drive one, all the way through your Super Nintendo sort of ages, your PS1s, your PS2s, your Xboxes. Interesting that it goes to Xbox only from 05. Which you'd have thought it would have been PS2, because it stayed along. And then you had the FIFAs. Um, and then again, it goes bloody weird. You've got FIFA 09 on PS3. Then FIFA 10, 11, and... FIFA 10 and 11, generic, with no... Uh, no console. PS3 for 12 and 13... 14 for the 360, which is surprising because I'm pretty sure that one was also on next gen. And then Xbox One for 15 and 16. And it's sort of various things. Uh, looking at the... Look at, even looking at like the, the music. The music from the games. Uh, just, you know, really a lot of stuff, a lot of detail. You can sort of tell by the way it's presented. It's one of these sort of like, um, I think it's Unbound it's called, that's where I'm getting the Ashens book. Uh, it's, it's a f sort of fan printed thing. You know, Benetton, Kearney, I'm not sure who they are, but you can sort of tell from the pe presentation and sort of the, the quality of the book that it is sort of a also with the style of presentation as well it's very sort of uh, a bare bone sort of thing it's not a top high standard sort of quality thing still good still a good history thing still something for me to read um in bed or whatever i do i can't even remember what i do that's useful um right back to uh, things I was getting away for free. I thought it was appropriate to pick this up. So this is a prison architect thing, which does fit on my head. Unlike the Nintendo thing. And yes, that as that in, as that tells you, I am a booze hound. It's it's one of the various sort of different emotions. They had different ones stuck on, but as soon as I saw the one with the drunk person, I was like, I'm having that. Not that I even get drunk. I think that's the irony. That's why I picked it up. I want to give the uh, appearance that I am a booze hound, even though um, I am by far a booze hound. Ah, uh, there's the card. Oh, that's the idea Xbox one. That's what I got for playing Cuphead. Wait, I actually had six of the cards. I didn't even realise that. What was the other one for? I think there's a Rise of the Tomb Raider one here somewhere. Oh, great, there's stuff at the bottom of here. Ooh, more vouchers. All right. <laughs> Uh, oh, Rainbow Six Siege beta codes. Guaranteed access. 
Well, that's useful. <laughs> Should have given that out earlier. Sorry, Internet, but you don't get that. Um, is that more? That's more vouchers. Oh, I have so many vouchers. I might just give them out to friends and whatever. Oh, wait, you're in America. Um, yeah. Owen isn't going to have much use with a voucher that's only valid in the UK. Think about it. Um, what? Oh, wow, I didn't even know that I had that. That's, uh... Sorry, I'm getting surprises that I haven't even checked on three weeks ago. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is a little leaflet from... Uh, Yisbird Games. Uh, Masquerada. Um, which is out 2016. Yeah, that one didn't look too bad. Very good art style, I will say, uh, Masquerada. Uh, another good art style one, which is the RPG. Killer 7 Earthbound Hipster Hybrid Heaven. From Destru good old Jonathan Holmes at Destructoid. This does sound crazy. That's supposed to be coming out for PC, Wii U and Mac this year. Uh, Valhalla. That's already out, is it? Why, waifu bartending. That was the one that I meant to play and I never got the chance to. Damn it. Forgot. I'm annoyed now because that's what I wanted to play. Well, I guess I'm not. I'm buying on Steam. And then here, uh, an interactive adventure from Tom Clancy's The Division. Again, I don't know where I got that from. I think they might have been handing them out somewhere. Wallpaper pack and free excerpt. Oh, it's going in there. And then this, this is the really good one. Um, it's a Prima Games. It must. It came with the, the thing. It's, I think, from the looks of it, it's a bottle opener. You know, for flip caps and whatever. Wow, that's actually a pretty heavy piece of metal as well. I am impressed. Just looked at the time, and I know I've still got about another five hours to go. I mean, I'm over exaggerating, but I've still got a lot to talk about. Uh, is this a purchase? Yeah, this is the this is a purchase. That's where that went. Right. Uh, this is the insert coin T-shirt. One of the first of many. And it's the official EGX 2015 shirt. It proves I was there. So I think this probably is one of the shirts I will be wearing next year. At some point. During my days there. As long as it's there again. But I'd have thought it would be. Um, yeah, the idea Xbox card is a bit stupid. Mainly because... It doesn't have anything on it. Anywho, um, oh, I've got them as well. I'll show them in a minute. Yeah, I'll do that now, actually. So then I can move that under here. Apologies for the technical difficulties here, but, you know, limited space and all that. What, what? Uh, so, next up is a newspaper. No, um, don't know why that's in there. Bloody hell. Ah, this is what I was going for. Again, it's folded up because it was the only thing I had to carry. It's annoying. Um, nice little, um, I guess, A3. I don't even know if it's, I don't think it's A3 even. Nice little Elite Dangerous poster. Hyping up, uh, the, oh, it's upside down. Bloody hell. Should get that right. It looked the same, it's just the shit that's going down rather than the shit that's going up. The only thing that makes, the only thing that you know is because that's there. Ooh. But yeah, that's pretty nice. It's a shame I've had to fold it, but you know, otherwise I ain't gonna get it home. Uh, so then, we come to my t-shirt haul. Again, these are the paid for one. Oh, God, there's more here in the bottom. 
<laughs> I'm now going to myself. Oh bloody hell! Oh no, that's the other one that I bought. Right. So yeah, this is the this is the fancy one. Oh, another Elite Dangerous Horizons card. Just telling me to pre-order it, which you know I'm not. Uh, what else have we got down here? Well, we've got the insert coin sticker, decal thing. Um, that's a voucher which is ex I'm using myself. Can it still use it? Yeah, it expires the end of the year. Nice. That's that. Uh, that's that. Oh, there we go. Alf escape. Get in, get out, get even, or get Alf. Yeah, for Odd World New and Tasty, which they had there on PC as it is, which is a, sort of a surprise because it isn't even new. But it was also, uh, I think they also had it on the Wii U stand. Something folded up here. That's the Tornado Energy thing. Uh, can't be. Prices available today from Tornado Energy. Well, I've already got. I'm already getting your things cheap anyway. Oh, right, well, got some pin badges. I completely forgot I've got these. Probably because they're right at the bottom of the bag. Um, that I'll grab out as well. Um. I think these are little alien badges from um, Oddworld. They look like it. Again, this is the most exciting unboxing video ever. It might actually outdo Screw Attack for the most boring unboxing, unbagging, whatever you want to call video in the history of the internet. Even Owen is going, what the hell are you doing this for, actually? Right, um, so I got some blind bag t-shirts, trying to remember, the, pro the problem is three of them are the same out of four that I bought. That was the stupidity of me just getting the 2XL and hoping that they'd be different, because they were different last time. So here I've got a dead sec. Oh, that's a Watch Dogs one! I, I, I wondered what DeadSec was, and then I was... That's the only thing I remember from Watch Dogs. A.K.A. Assassin's Creed Modern Day. Because I'm pretty sure, somehow at the end of the new Assassin's Creed, we'll find out Watch Dogs is Assassin's Creed, and Watch Dogs 2 is confirmed for next year. Weird how that hasn't leaked out yet. But it probably will happen. So I purchased that one. Uh, the other three are the same. So the positive thing with that is I only have to get one out. So I can stick. Um, I think those two I didn't bother to pull out. So they're relatively normal looking. Sounds wrong, but you know. Uh, so this one is, um, ironically I've already bought this one as well, I think, somewhere else. Uh, this is the Create Moon Powered by Your Imagination. This is your little big, this is your little big planet uh, t-shirt, which was, um, it, uh, you know, Insert Coin are very, you know, they're very good quality shirts. They're not like some of these, the Call of Duty ones that are sort of Gildan and cheap printed sort of things. They're, these are sort of uh, really, really smart. And then here is the nice one. The, um, the I think exclusive to EGX, at least until, you know, the actual game comes out in a few weeks. Uh, the Assassin's Creed Syndicate, um, as you can see by the engine thing there. I think it's... Like with the other Assassin's Creed one that I've got, it's a three-quarter length shirt. But it, it's a snazzy black t-shirt that I'll probably be wearing to Spectre or um, Star Wars. No, I'll wear the Star Wars shirt for Star Wars. I'm an idiot. And then here was the other blind... So those... The, the other blind bag ones, I think, were a fiver. I've realised I've got to put that back in the blind bag. 
Otherwise, it's not much of a blind bag. Even though I know what's in the blind bag, so it's not blind anymore. And this, this is the one I was really surprised about. I could tell from the size of it. Ironically, I had to get a 3XL, because that's all they had. I didn't even realise. I knew it was a hoodie, because of the fitness of it. And I did not wasn't exactly sure of what it was. I could see it was brown, and I could see it was a hoodie, and it seemed nice. And then I just noticed, right in the neck, the logo. Just a little bit of it. Right there. Something that looks a lot like a Shenmue logo. So yeah, I've actually got the the fancy Shenmue hoodie, which I I'm not sure whether that's out of print or not. But all I do know is it is about uh when it, at least when it was brand new when I was looking at it like two, three years ago brand new it was about 30 or 40 pound and getting it for a tenner is like I'm, 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 I'm alright with that and then Starship Mechanic I'm trying to think I don't think I played this one the problem is with quite a lot of these is they're handing vouchers out so it's, it's getting a gist of what you did play and what you didn't play Speaking of what you didn't play, because I need to bring this up here. I don't know, I can't be bothered to timestamp it because I don't know how long the video is. HTC. If you try organising a thing again to show off your headset, do a better booking system. So, HTC, we're having the HTC Vive there from Steam, you know, the Steam VR headset. And they did it so all people had to do was apply on the website and then they'd uh, get a, a, a spot. That's the way it was presented on the website. Except, right in the small print, because that good old small print, turns out it was actually for a chance. And it was basically going to be uh, a lottery thing. Except the only problem being... They probably had only, let's say, a hundred spots a day. So, in total, four hundred over the four days. From what I get, from what I gather, at least one day's worth of people attending the entire event tried to apply. That being twenty thousand. So yeah, 2% of people didn't even get a chance. And the thing is, they were sort of being rude to everybody that wasn't, um, wasn't there. Of course, the irony being, if people hadn't gone and wanted to, you know... This was a booth that had a thing basically for queuing. Every, at the start of every day, when people knew that they weren't having a chance to get in, the booth was empty. It looked like somewhere that nobody wanted to go. And Steam and HTC did that themselves. If, if you've got a system... To allow people to get the chance to see it. The, the weird thing is. And this is going to cue me to get up. The weird thing is for that. We have to give props. To a company that I didn't think we were going to give props to. And that's Sony. So. Setting the scene. Hopefully I'm still in mic view. I should be. Because it normally picks it up from here. Sony had their PlayStation um, VR stuff on show. You know, the, what was called Project Morpheus. And for their system, it was actually a booking system for a certain slot at a certain time that you had to be at. And 
weirdly enough, that worked. And weirdly enough, everybody that wanted to go to it managed to get to go to it. Because they had a limit as to what people could see. Uh, hang on. <laughs> I'm using this as a delaying tactic to try and get the posters. Ah. So much stuff. How is that in there? Now I've got to look in here. So yeah. The Sony thing. I've even forgot that this was here. It's probably going to be more stuff in here now. Oh, there's my camera. That's useful. Oh, it is a thing on the fly. Get out of magic business. Yeah, um. Wow, is that stuff from last year? I feel old. Yeah, Forza Horizon 2 pen. That's, usual. That's, from, last, that's from last year. That's not even this year. What am I doing? Yeah, look. Hang on, what's that? Yeah. I've got a car that has headlights. Woo! How crappy does that look? Um. Yeah, well, that's that's where I was on about. Um. Oh, and that's the sanitizer. Oh, thank God. You made me not sick. Mwah! <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking like that. Yeah, I, I'm causing the delaying tactic because this is to do with it. So yeah, Sony had their PlayStation VR stuff. And, you know, everybody queued up. There was sort of a special sort of area that people had to wait in before it was their time to get their hands on the thing. And... Uh, It was really, really snazzy. Oh, that's where the Elite Dangerous poster went that I didn't fold up. Ah, it all makes sort of sense, he said lyingly. So, uh, with the PlayStation VR, um, there was various different demos. Some were PlayStation Move based. Um, yeah, because they were saying PlayStation VR, some was PlayStation Move, so it was like it wasn't actually headset stuff. And I think they had to ask you what sort of games you were into. And I guess because I said everything, they gave me the horror game. <laughs> yeah, the infamous one that's been scaring a lot of people. Uh, Capcom's demo. They kept saying game, but in all honesty, it's a demo. It's a tech demo. Let's get that right. So it's the only thing I can criticise of your PlayStation VR stuff. Call it what it is, a tech demo. But I managed to play Kitchen. This is the horror thing. So basically, the really the thing that makes it even worse if you were a scaredy cat is um, they were going, if you're having any problems, uh, don't try and pull the headset off because it's literally going to be strapped to your head. Just put your hand up and say I want it to stop and then I'll release you over time I can stop the demo immediately and I'm like <laughs> I just think that's a brilliant concept it's like right I'm going to trap you in here and you can't immediately get out you just have to signal so I can get you out of the trap it's like Jigsaw's Jix done this on purpose what's this all about either way the demo was you with the PS4 controller, with the camera sort of there, where you are. You obviously had to be straight with it or whatever. But the controller was mimicking your hands being tied. And the weird thing is, the way I was doing it, I was purp I couldn't really do it because of the controller, but I was trying to get my wrists as close as possible to sort of make it authentic as possible. <laughs> but I was actually tied up. And the idea is you're tied in the chair and you can't get out. And you obviously can't look 360. Because you, you sort of... The idea is that you sat down. And you, you can't really, you know, move. Because you're tied to the chair. And I don't know if it's supposed to be like this detective and partner and whatever. 
but the, the crazy thing is, I don't know whether this was the camera picking it up, but the, the design of shirt that I had with my, the color of the shirt, anyway, the pattern that was on it, which was the Last of Us thing, um, I didn't, that wasn't on the thing, but I think the color was actually green. And the color of my trousers was the color of a trousers. I don't know whether that was picking it up or whether that's by chance. It's the weird thing. Um, so basically, this person is... There's a person on the floor who rouses, trying to get you out. If they were saying something, I couldn't hear it because it was way too loud. I'd love to get a second chance to experience it somehow local to me uh, in the Midlands of the UK. If you're putting it out there, Sony. And getting it in an environment when I can really be immersed, because then it could spook me a lot more than the... Because I was sort of weirded out, I will say. It wasn't spooky, because there was so much loud noises, and someone on a voice on stage, right next to where the booze were, going absolutely crazy for... I can't remember what game it was. Whether it was Destiny, or Rock Band, or something... He didn't make that out. I can't be bothered to put subtitles. And he's trying to get you out of the the um, the ropes that you're being tied to. And the only thing that's at hand is a giant steak knife. So the idea is, because he can't really do any better, you have to put your hands up. And the blade is like here. And it's going through. And the whole concept is... If you think about it, when you when that when that gets stopped with that rope and it just snaps through, the knife is going to get like there. And th I guess that's the idea. It's like scaring you off. Then there's this other sort of basically the PT lady or some very crazy woman going ahead and killing your partner, dragging him off like down the corridor. That you can't see because obviously you're still trapped to the chair. And his head literally just like rolls off and is there. Luckily it ain't moving or twitching. I don't think it was moving or twitching. The, the great thing is though, because you're in the chair, I actually literally just went forward to try and look at it closer. And I'm like, man. And I literally went, and that is sick. Because <laughs> um, I w weirdly wasn't that scared by the thing. Because I appreciated how good this was. The only pr issue was I was getting really hot and basically steamed up flashes. Because obviously with this thing on your head, not being used to it being there, it's gonna get it's gonna get perspiry and stuff. It wasn't actually that I was scared. Surprisingly, there were some bits where it was like I flinched. I wasn't like sort of a screaming sort of crazy person. I was like whoa. The atmosphere was really good. And uh, then, you know, they were saying, oh, go back to the booth and you can get a special present. And it turns out it is these fancy Sony posters. I'm going to keep them curled up because, you know, it's easier to have them curled up. But we've got one that's very sort of cell shaded and whatever. Uh, the set, I think, is it three or two? Uh, it's just two. And then the other one seems to be very Destiny inspired. Just go from the other end. Yeah, it's a very sort of sci fi looking one. Either way, looks very, very nice, the posters. So, And, you know, they didn't have to give me the posters. They just did, because it was like, thank you for experiencing it. I had to take a little survey. Thankfully, it, was like a, it wasn't a NDA sort of survey, so I can actually tell you about the experience. As much as I can, because it's virtual reality, it's pretty hard to go. I had a thing on, and it was exciting, and yeah... That could, have, that could have been what I just told you, but whatever. Um, yeah. PlayStation VR looks good. 
I can't get my hopes up entirely because, you know, with the HTC experience, I was sort of miffed by VR, and the Oculus was pretty good. It looks, you know, it seems like a good concept. I don't know whether it's a fully fledged thing. Case in point, look at the recent release of um, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. They kept showing it and showing it and showing it in Oculus VR, and it still has Oculus VR mode. But the way most people are playing it is with their friends on Twitch or just online and putting it on videos here on YouTube and whatever. Whatever. While I'm there, let's get to the rest of the posters. I picked up quite a few of these, so I can't be bothered to show you all of them. Uh, I didn't get... So we had a double-sided uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided poster with the autographs of all the people that worked on it. Literally... I mean, look, I'm just looking at that. Jonathan, Jonathan Jack Bellet, why is your, why is your, um, or why is your signature basically tire tracks? I've only just noticed that. Why is it tire tracks? And on the other side, I'm annoyed that I couldn't get this signed by the man himself, David Bateson, aka, you know, actually Hitman. Because he was there, and uh, I just wasn't be able to make it in time because of, uh, oh, I can't remember. I was in the queue for something else, I think. I had to go to, oh yeah, it's because I wanted to go to the Uncharted retrospective thing. Which was a nice thing to go to, because, you know, I am a fan of the Uncharted games. Actually, can that fit in there? Oh, it can on the fly booking here ladies and gentlemen on the fly booking that will stay flatter there Whee! I've already got some bounded up I think that's that one it's already creased in the middle because it, it's given way because there's only one band on it that one's better still bad though uh, I did also get a destiny poster I might have picked up a couple, or that might be one. But that is the... I don't know if that's a Destiny or Destiny Taken King. Or, I think it's double-sided or whatever, but that's there. And then also a bit bad about... Um, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 posters that were giving out at the end of the day at the Sony stand on the last day. Very... Very snazzy image here. Only, only the curse survives. Oh, that's for the Black Ops. That's the Black Ops zombies thing, isn't it? I'm guessing. Because if it's if it's to do with Black Ops, and that's like one of the big modes that they're pushing. That that's how much I've been keeping track of that thing. It's a shame because weirdly enough, because it's got. Ron Perlman and Heather Graham and all that, I'm actually interested in the Black Ops zombie mode. It's more it's more interesting that the zombies multiplayer thing has a better story than quite a lot of shooter games. There's an irony there. A uh, couple more things. I think these are both purchases. Because I think I've, I've run out of freebies. Um, so I did get some pop, pop vinyl figures. Uh, the ones I bought were the Burton Ernie ones. I think they were the only ones really in stock that I was interested in that were the right price. Because uh, quite a few of the uh, like Guardians of the Galaxy and Game of Thrones and uh, Breaking Bad ones were more expensive because they're obviously more lucrative. Um... Yeah, I think they were sold out of Cookie Monster, which I was annoyed about, but I got Burton Ernie. Pretty nice. Can't be bothered to get the other one out of the bag and show you completely, because this video's gone on for at least over an hour, I think. But this is, this is the, you know, I didn't realise the haul was going to take this long. And finally, I, well, no, it can't be finally, because, oh god, there's more stuff. Oh god, there's more stuff. Stuff that I forgot about. Oh no, that's pretty cool. Um, what is that? 
Oh, yay, this is the little thing that I got. Uh, for getting a question right. Which I'm guessing will be collectible at some point. After the success of the... After the success of, like, the Hitman little figures and whatever. Um, they were doing an Adam Jensen figure for Mankind Divided. With his, uh... Little blade there, or better not, yeah, better not snap it, Ash. Because otherwise, you know, it's gonna. Well, it's not. I don't know why I'm saying losing value. I'm not selling any of this stuff. Uh, then, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 T-shirt in what size? Large. So the other one was actually a benefit because it's like that will fit me. This one won't. Um. Funny thing about this, you know, that's why that's why I was saying earlier about the irony of getting the T-shirt for free, because I already had it. Um, with that, I, I I actually went in the queue twice. One time was I think for, um, oh, the the hard point one where you've got to control the points on the map to get points. But the one, the other one that I played, I think they had four different modes on the four rules. But the the fourth, the second one that I played was Uplink, which is basically your blitzball one, which is trying to get you know score in the goal. And you know my kill deaths on that were useless. But I think I was the top scorer because when we went after half time and went to the second half, everybody started shooting at each other. So literally, without anybody really coming under, with, without me coming under fire from anybody, I got two unanswered points. Um, which, admittedly, the game went to overtime, and then uh, we won both halves of overtime on aggregate or whatever, because somebody scored in the first half. But... You know, I, it was sort of weird. I was like, wait, I'm doing something positive in a Call of Duty game? Despite, you know, not really killing anybody? I think this is the game mode that I have to play all the time. Because everybody was just focused on gunning. Rather than the actual concept of, you've got a score. I, perhaps I should actually be competitive in that. I might be good. I don't know. Uh, then they were giving out... Um, now this was the one surprise. Despite the fact that they've been at previous conventions, even with just a video, uh, a video booth, there was no Fallout 4 there. Bethesda were originally supposed to have some sort of presence, but they literally just pulled. So the UK gets no Bethesda whatsoever. I think Paris Games Week gets it in a couple of weeks. Obviously Gamescom did. But we get nothing so thanks Bethesda I don't know what happened so they were giving away probably can't properly see it um, Fallout 4 t-shirts well, well I guess Fallout t-shirts generically again it's large so it probably won't fit but uh, I think it was like they were they were doing various questions and whatever and they were going through the the special thing. And the only reason that I knew that uh, E was endurance because two days before I'd saw the little Fallout video that uh, they've been uploading on a regular basis. The other thing, which is actually pretty snazzy, um, that I did get, again, all this stuff is for free because I forgot about this, was the... Yes! <laughs> The actual, the, so many people were out there just like being like this. It was like, this is creepy. So yeah, Vault, Vault Boy. The irony is it says, this is not a toy. Recommended for ages 15 and up. The amount of kids that had this on is pretty ridiculous. But the fact that the eyes are, you can still see, sort of, through it, is pretty, pretty snazzy, I will say. So that was for free. Um, 
trying to see what else is in here. I got a EGX 2015 wristband, an EGX uh, lanyard. Oh, it has got a little strappy thing. Where's it done? Tomato sauce. Weird name. Um, what else have we got? I think the only other thing in here, which is pretty nice as well, only just because I remembered that I've got them, <laughs> which is a bit stupid, because they're pretty nice, as I keep saying. Um, I got some PlayStation Classic Coasters. It's a pack of four. They're fully on, like, proper sort of glass things. And they're four classic games that are sort of... I don't know if they're actually cases you can open. I can't be bothered to try and open it and check. But you've got Wipeout, you've got Destruction Derby, Derby, whatever you call it, Gran Turismo, and Parappa de Rapper. And by the looks of it, they've actually got, you know, the actual artwork from those games as they are released in Europe as well. So... That is pretty nice. Cost me a fair bit, but I might as well get it while they're selling it because they were pretty nice, as I keep saying. Speaking of, um, the most expensive purchase, singular. Other items combined did cost more, but the one that I really wanted, I think it was about 30, 35 pound, Again from the same people, which means it's made in the UK. The PlayStation Christmas Jumper. Look at that. Look at... Well, I mean, that looks pretty cool. That is something that I actually wouldn't be ashamed to. The problem with some of the game stuff, like the Call of Duty stuff, if you wear it just generically out, people are not going to look at you the same way. That sort of stuff... If you know the PlayStation symbols, and I know quite a lot of people will, you know, they'll get it. But it's not an outlandish thing because you've got the reindeers on and everything. It's it's just a, a nice thing. So, yeah, um, EGX organisers try and really make it easier with the queues next year because otherwise it's going to be even worse and you don't want a convention that's getting worse. Um, despite you know, despite the fact you've moved into a better place, which is better for me because it's closer to me. The fact that uh, queuing was much worse for quite a lot of the games uh, for some people, or so for some games they really didn't judge how much they wanted to, be, you know, how many people that they wanted to be there. And to be quite honest, the queues actually as well to the actual venue were much, much busier than before. If, if, if anything, there needs to be a much more, there needs to be a much different. See, the way it worked in previous years is the people that have already got like the super passes and whatever to get in for the four days got let in first because obviously they don't have to be processed you know they've already got their wristbands they don't have to go into the problem of having to collect their wristbands every day whether it be your early pass or your standard pass if you'd have done that and let them in first at the front um, for the second, third, and fourth days, you wouldn't have had the problem that I think you would have had. Because the, the problem being that people then were, people then that were in front or around you were only there for the day, so their rush was to go to the games they only wanted to play because it was that day. Whereas if you just let everybody from the four day through, they could have gone to the games that that they wanted to play over the four days. So some of the days, like the the, the you know the Thursday, would have been crazy because you can't you, you know you can't split them apart. 
but if it was on the Friday or the Saturday, you wouldn't have had the crazy footfall that there was to get to the division, to get to Star Wars and whatever, because some of the other people would have played them because they had their four-day passes. You've had, you know, you wouldn't have had the the crazy sort of rush and everything that did happen. The queues were a problem, not just at the booths, but just in general for the actual venue. It really, it really wasn't good. So whether there can be any improvement done there, I don't know if you guys will have to see. Because I think the ticket numbers were upped because it was a bigger venue. Problem being that they gave too many, they gave too many people, they put too many people inside. If if I'm being honest, they put too many people inside for the size of the venue. Admittedly, you know, it's four times bigger than what they had at Earl's Court, but they didn't judge it right somehow. I don't know, because it seemed like the the weird thing is, like, the, the stands seemed smaller than they were. Well, some of the stands seemed smaller than they actually were at Earl's Court. Which is the irony, because you're in four halls of a venue. You know, six, seven, eight, and twenty. If anything, for the next time, you can't really be much bigger, because there's other things happening that year. But there needs to be much, a much better, much better organization, if possible, because there really needs to be enough room for a lot of things I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that there should be less games there, there should be more but you know the amount of people that were there there sort of needs to be there needs to be much more control probably even more of a, di more of a difference in terms of people being let in an hour early uh, than the standard tickets. I think this, uh, people got in early at 10, and then the standard tickets were 11. Uh, other big thing, the thing finished at 6. Uh, the previous years, it went on till 7 at... Um, it went on till 7 o'clock at the uh, at Earl's Court. I don't know if that's because they have to be out by 6, because that's the way the NEC runs. I'm not sure. But if, if more time was allowed, there would have been much more... It might, would have been much easier for people to actually get a game. Because it's, it's annoying at 3 o'clock when you've seen people going up to Star Wars or Mirror's Edge or whatever and literally being told, you know, uh, there's no point in joining the queue. Which is a surprise, if you think about it, because it won't, st you know, it will just be rubbish. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. Either way. Yeah, that's my haul. That's a lot of stuff. This is a lot of vouchers for energy drink. I didn't realise I had this many. I am going to be bloody hyper for the next... Well, I can buy them till December, so probably going to be excited on energy drinks till about 2019 oh uh, well anyway you know that's the EGX stuff the good uh, the bad and the freebies and the not so freebies because I had to pay for some of it but you know that's that, that's, a, that's a gamer's life I guess oh I guess the other thing for a gamer's life would be uh, no stupid um no stupid pre-order bonuses. Shame about half of the things, far, half of the AAA games that were there were all boasting that sort of stuff. I guess that's the next thing we need to crack down on EGX. Well, not EGX, publishers at EGX. I think you already know my opinions on it. But at the rate it's going, I'm going to have to start talking about getting them soon.